Good afternoon, everybody. Let's talk about the brief word for today, Exodus chapter 1. There's an exodus coming, and rigor is key. There's an exodus coming, and rigor is key. Exodus chapter 1, verse 11. Therefore they set, Pharaoh and uh, his taskmasters, set taskmasters over them, over the nation of Israel, to afflict them with their burdens. And they built for Pharaoh supply cities and Python and Ramesses. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. And they were in dread of the children of Israel. So the Egyptians made the children of Israel serve with rigor. There's some listening to uh, this video right now that are in the place that you are being afflicted, but you are succeeding in your affliction. You're getting used to the way the world is treating you. You're adjusting your life to the way they're treating you rather than adjusting your life the way God wants you to live for him. So you are being afflicted. You are multiplying and growing. You're having this, this uh, sense of security that's growing around you because you're adjusting to the afflictions of Egypt just like the nation of Israel did here in verse 11. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew, and they were in dread of the children of Israel. And so the Lord calls it rigor to happen. One verse that I want to talk about before going on, Psalm 2710 says, When my father and mother forsake me, then the Lord will take care of me. There are some listening right now that there is something or someone and it may be your father and your mother, but it may be something that is comparable or comparable to your father or mother with the same respect or the same authority. That when they forsake you, the Bible says, then the Lord will take care of you. There are things that you are praying that God take care of in your life right now, but you must be forsaken by that which you hold greater confidence towards or assurance in that's not God. There's some that are trusting in these other things and it's not God. And those other things are the father and mother type in your life and they must be forsaken. They must forsake you because you won't forsake them. God will cause them to forsake you. And how will he do it? He will cause rigor to take place. Remember I said rigor is key. What does the word rigor mean? An act or instance of strictness, severity, or cruelty. You're going to be committed. You have been committed. Let me rephrase that. You have been consistently committed and dedicated to that father, mother figure or authority in your life. That's been your life. It's not been God. It's not been the word of God. It's not been anything other than that one thing that you hold greater value than God's will for your life. And so God is going to cause, he calls the affliction to take place. And you got used to the affliction. He's now going to cause a rigor to take place because that's when you're going to cry out to God. The rigor is a forsaking, just like in Psalm 27, 10, when my father and mother forsake me, then the Lord will take care of me. You're so used to and putting your confidence in these other things to take care of you, these other people to take care of you, that you're not even asking, not even thinking about what God thinks and not even caring that, uh, that you want God to take care of you. But God will, if rigor does not come, you're not his. But the reason why rigor is there is because God is saying you're putting too much confidence and too much of your assurance in these other things. So I will cause acts of or instances of strictness, severity, and even cruelty so that you start to put your confidence in me. God bless you guys.